This is a quick introduction to the main features of EndNote. To get more detailed information, go to our Using EndNote guide or attend one of the University of Queensland Library's classes for students and staff. To begin, we're going to assume that you've already installed EndNote. If you haven't, go to our Help page and download your copy. First, start EndNote and either create your library or open the one that you've already created. We strongly recommend having just one library for all your work. To create the library, simply go File, New and decide where you want to save it. Be aware that when you create the library, there are actually two entities, a file and a folder of the same name. It's very important to keep them together if ever you move or copy the library. After all, this library becomes increasingly important to you as you add to it and use it and come to rely on it. And you may be working with it for years, if not decades. If you're going to use multiple machines, such as a computer on campus and another one at home, or on an iPad, consider syncing online. This is a secure option that's available to all UQ staff and students. To find out more, search Google about syncing EndNote. When you've created a library, you're ready to start using EndNote. While there are many useful processes you can perform with EndNote, we will concentrate on the primary purpose, recording bibliographic details and inserting them into your papers as formatted citations and bibliography. To get the details into your library, the EndNote website promotes a system by which you can connect directly to databases. We, however, recommend that you do not use this feature. We believe you usually get better results by using the more sophisticated range of options available from the database or catalogue's own search screen, and then downloading only the records that you're interested in. We'll demonstrate this process shortly. Most databases, catalogues and some publishing sites will offer a way of sending the details of articles, books, book chapters, etc. to your EndNote library. Even Google Scholar offers this feature, after you switch it on in the settings. This is accessed under Bibliography Manager, which can be activated and configured for EndNote. After this setting is saved, all future results will offer a link to export to EndNote. Once it goes into your library, where the details are automatically recorded in the appropriate fields, the reference is ready to be used in any of your papers. When you insert the reference, EndNote will follow the rules of the referencing style that you've set for the document to format the citation and bibliography. Of course, this will only work correctly if the right details have gone into the right fields. Each record, which EndNote calls a reference, needs to have the right details in those fields that it will draw upon when producing the citation and bibliography. While this process is normally performed automatically when importing from a database, which we will see later, there are occasions when you'll need to create a new or edit an existing reference in order for it to appear correctly in the bibliography. If you're drawing upon materials such as personal communications, unpublished materials, interviews, etc., you will need to create a new reference in your library because the details are not recorded in any database from which you can export. Most websites will not have an existing record that could be usable. In such cases, then, it's important that you create the new record in your library so EndNote can correctly enter the details into your paper. This includes ensuring that the reference type is correct so that EndNote will follow the appropriate styling rule. You enter the details, at least into those fields that will be required to generate the citation and bibliography in your chosen referencing style. Entering the details into most of the fields is straightforward and there's no formatting required as EndNote will arrange and format it. The author field, however, has some additional requirements to ensure that EndNote is able to display all names correctly. The majority of the time you'll not need to do it, so we won't take the time to explore that issue now. We do, however, recommend that you use our help page on entering authors' names. Once a record is created or edited, EndNote will save the changes. This means that you will not need to save your library because it will be saving with each new edition or edit. It is necessary to have records for each and every reference that you use in your papers in order that the bibliography is properly configured. Fortunately, the majority of references tend to be of published material such as articles, books, book chapters, etc. And the normal process of recording the details into your library is by exporting them from databases, catalogues and some publisher sites. While there are some differences between these resources, 
most follow the same principle as can be seen in UQ Library's catalog. After performing a search, you mark the records that you're considering using in your research, and then you send them to your EndNote library. When searching our catalog directly, you have access to all the functions to get the best results. For more information, check out our help guide on searching UQ Library and for many other databases. In UQ Library Search, you mark the records for export by clicking on the pin. This creates a list of items that are ready to move across to your library. Other sites will have different terms for marking or saving a record, but perform the same process. Once you have pinned all the records you're interested in, go to the prepared list. The next process is also named differently on various catalogues and databases and could be labelled as download citation or send to, etc. In UQ Library Search, as in many databases, it's called export, and the option to import into your version of EndNote is the RIS option. At the time of preparing this introduction, there is the additional requirement of selecting coding. Just select the default. In Windows versions, the import will normally happen automatically straight after installation. In Mac, however, some additional settings may need to be established to enable the automated process. We have a help page for this. The details from all the selected records are then recorded in the appropriate fields and are ready to be inserted into your document. To insert references into a Word document, you use the EndNote toolbar. If you're using an author date style such as APA or a numbered style like Vancouver, you place the cursor at the point that you want the citation to appear. If you're using a footnoting style such as Chicago, you need to use Word's own system for inserting a footnote and then use EndNote to insert the details. We have a help page for this. When inserting into the text, the location for the cursor will depend on the style that you're using. This is particularly the case with numbered styles and its placement before or after the full stop. To select the record, you can search for it from the toolbar, or you can select it directly in the library. Once you have selected a record or multiple records, you click on the Insert option. On the default setting on the EndNote toolbar, the instant formatting is turned on. And as soon as you insert a reference, both the citation and the bibliography are formatted, or reformatted in the case of the update to the bibliography. EndNote takes care of these details for you from rough draft to final submission, literally from the first word. However, you need to take care when making any edits to the citations or bibliography. While it may look like normal text, these are actually being produced by field codes and they must be edited carefully or you risk corruption. If you need to change anything in the bibliography, simply return to the library and make the change to the record itself. It will then be updated in your document. If you need to make changes to the citation, such as including page numbers, you need to use the editing tool in the EndNote toolbar called Edit and Manage Citations. There are a number of editing options available, but the most often used is the Pages field for including the page numbers for a quote. As with most of EndNote's features, if this tool is used correctly, it will allow you to reformat your paper instantly between referencing styles if required. This was a quick introduction to the basic features of EndNote in order to get you started using the program and to encourage you to start using it from the earliest stages in your writing. There are other functions within the EndNote program that can assist your research as well as your writing. We recommend signing up for one of the many EndNote classes run by the University of Queensland Library. Also, check out our help guide using EndNote. Go to endnote.com for their training pages or simply Google for one of the multitude of help guides that universities and colleges around the world offer to users of the EndNote program.